the second half of the day, going to be David Freak Turley. Plus, joining us on the journey through Group A is OGN's caster Monte Cristo, Evil Genius's Crepo, and of course, CLG's Double Lifts. We are halfway through the final day of the group stage, and if you just joined us, you missed an incredible photo finish to Group B. It had tiebreakers and everything. Let's actually take a look at the standings. First and foremost, Fnatic dominated Group B. They only dropped one game all week on the way to a first place finish and a spot in the quarterfinals. And securing the second spot in the quarterfinals from Group B is Gambit. After finishing the scheduled portion of the day in a tie with Ozone, they won a one game playoff for their spot into the final eight. Well, it's time to talk a little bit about Group B just quickly before we start with Group A. So, guys, how do you think uh, the Group B teams stack up heading into the quarterfinals? I want to start this one off with start this one off with Fnatic, because I think they're a little bit easier to talk about. Krepo, what's your thoughts? I think they're looking really strong. I don't think anybody would have expected it either. Like, there's a lot of people that put them in their top two. I thought maybe they could be top one, but definitely not having this strong performance and, and just basically towering over all the other t groups in the, all the other teams in this group, rather. Yeah, I think they really turned it on in the group stage. They definitely had good strategic awareness. They had good champions, like aside from, aside from one of them against Vulcan. But what really surprised me was their comeback potential, because I remember this desk actually talked about it um, a couple games ago, about teams going on tilt and regaining your composure in the middle of a game when you're behind. And you guys talked about the, the most recent game against Ozone, where they got behind, but immediately made plays, made calls, and said, we're back in it, we made a play. And, and one thing that strikes me about Fnatic and Gambit is the fact that they're so solid and, and Gambit is so clutch because th I think they've had so much tournament experience, nerves don't get to them anymore. Um, you see a lot of new teams coming in here. This is some, for some teams, it's their first LAN ever, and it's on the world stage. These guys don't care. They're playing really solid, and they don't, they're not affected by the nerves at all. And there's a reason they call it, like we call it in Europe, pulling a Fnatic. They're renowned for hiding in a random brush, a random place just making the comeback. They don't care. 2,000 gold behind 3,000. They will keep trying and they'll keep fighting. And if they lose, it's too bad. Yeah, I'm really, really happy that uh, Double have brought up Monty, uh, Gambit, rather, because, of course, Gambit, they've also qualified for the quarterfinals after beating Ozone. I know that, Monty, you picked them as your dark horse in the group. They came out, they, they ousted Ozone, who you were also considering. What's your take on Gambit? Well, I not only picked them as my dark horse, but to exit the group as well. So. I mean, I said this at the beginning. You can never count Gambit out. They are a clutch team. You can't underestimate them. That said, they did look still weaker than expected. And I think a lot of people said, you know, we had pretty good ideas about who was going to be going out of this group. We all thought Ozone. And then we had some differing picks on that second team. But I came in thinking that this group would be pretty hotly contested. Fnatic has just cleaned up. But for me, Fnatic's been playing great. But they also, ha I feel haven't faced the best competition because the other teams really failed to live up to expe expectations here. Yeah, I think uh, Gambit gets a lot more like recognition because other teams failed to meet expectations and they exceeded expectations. People don't expect a third seed from Europe to put on such a show, but I don't think uh, they'll be able to, maybe they won't be able to put on such like clutch moves and just turn out the very last second against uh, more solid teams. I think that's it's in some ways unfair, in some ways unfair, because last year CLG EU was the third seed coming out of Europe, and you guys took top four, Crapo. Of course, you guys did amazing right there. Um, and it, it, I think it speaks to the, the sort of late in the season turn on by, by Gambit. They had a really rough season the whole time through, and then the boot camping kicks in. And, and you're right, Monty, that, that they're not really completely up to form, but you're still seeing a lot of those amazing plays. Like, the last five minutes of that game against Ozone is the Gambit that took top four last year, that never finishes outside the top four at any land ever. You see glimmers of that Gambit. They just need to shore up the rest of their gameplay. Now, talk to me a little bit, just quickly, about the games that, that Gambit played today. Because, first of all, they almost lost the, the first 20 minutes. They lost the first 20 minutes of the game versus Vulcan. Then Vulcan made a play on Baron, Gambit got back in it. They were playing against Ozone. They had an incredible lead, and they almost lost it at Baron. So, they have managed to pull out, but what's your take on those mistakes, just very quickly? Like, oh my god, they're, these guys are so clutch. And especially, I just want to point out, Diamond and Alex Hitch, just, they're just so clutch. It feels dirty, almost. Like, I don't want to put salt in the wounds, Crepo, mm -hmm. but like, when Let's they played anyways. EG in the third game, yeah, I'll just do it anyways. When they played <laughs> EG in the third game, when they made that flash play, I don't know if people watched EU, uh, EU playoffs, that was, these guys are just clutch at the very last possible moment, they'll just pull it out. 
Well, we'll have to see if they can keep doing that because they're living life dangerously. That does bring us up to speed as we get ready to rocket into the five remaining Group A games. But first, let's take a look at those standings. China's OMG and Korea's SKT are locked in as the top two teams in the group and guaranteed a spot in next week's quarterfinals. Which means that Europe's Lemon Dogs and North America's Team Solar Mid can finish no higher than third, while the wildcard Gaming Gear EU only has two more chances to take a game here at Worlds. All right, I do want to talk a little bit about the two teams that qualified for the quarterfinals out of Group A, China's OMG and Korea's SKT1. So how do you guys see them stacking up against the other six quarterfinal teams? I'm going to list them off. China's Royal Club, Korea's Najin Black Sword, Taiwan's Gamma Bears, North America's Cloud9, Europe's Fnatic, and Gambit. Let's start with Monty. I, you know, I feel like we have a pretty good read on Royal and Cloud9. We've seen a lot of their games. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of information about Najin Black Sword or the Gamma Bears right now. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start selling tickets to the, uh, the Najin Sword hype train now. <laughs> but um, from what I've... Surprise, surprise. I, I mean, yeah. just if you look at the team in the past, yes, they haven't had the best placement. They finished effectively fifth in the last two seasons of Champions in Korea after taking that first place victory with a uh, different top laner, Mach Noon and Winter. But that said, this is a great patch for Najin Sword. You have Prey, who's an extremely solid Trinity Force AD carry player. You have Expression, who is a carry top laner known for his Jax and Aurelia play. They have two mid laners here, one of which is Nagne, who's an assassin mid player. And I hear nothing but praise from the Korean pros about Watch and Solo Q these days on his jungling. And not only that, but the scrim records that I've been hearing about coming out from China and Korea as of late, um, I mean, IG has said they went 0-10 against Sword and Scrims. And then uh, couple that with the fact that Najin also brought their sister team, Najin Shield, to America to practice strategies with. Uh, they're really making a push here. So we haven't seen them in a while. Will they be able to live up to this? But I think that if you look at it from the perspective of the patch, the team, their infrastructure, their scrims, have a little more faith. Yeah, I think you're right that they're definitely a, a strong team and, and a good challenger for the throne here. Uh, the only thing I can really say to this point as well is that they had been playing, uh, though they didn't get very far in, in Champion Summer, they have been playing the NLB tournament, which is uh, something that's going to have VODs. Uh, am, I, am I wrong in this one? Yeah, so it's been playing televised matches. They at least have matches there that teams can look at. They had a final against LGIM, so there at least are televised matches there that teams can research to look at their, ch their, their champion pool and see what they can do. It has been a, a while since those games, yeah. though. Yeah, and I've played against Prey multiple times across my career, and this guy is really, really good. At first, I disrespected him, and I was like, this guy's not very good, but it turns out he's actually a really strong player. He's versatile, he's really lane dominant, and just everyone on shield or on sword, it seems, people say that they're actually even stronger without McNoon because expression is just so godlike. I mean... This team, they can't be underestimated if you're coming into the quarterfinals. We've spent a lot of time talking about Najin. Let's start to roll this one along. So let's touch on Royal and, and how, you know, we've compared them to the likes of OMG. I know, Freak, you, mm -hmm. you had some thoughts on this one. Yeah, so I think they're a very similar team in terms of they play a similar type of game where they're very aggressive. They're going to look for dives, they're going to look for plays. They've got an assassin mid laner. Um, but their actual sort of, their playmaking comes from different roles. I know you talked about this to me a little bit, Double Lift. Um, yeah, so Royal is especially a, a CLG-esque uh, team where their bot lane is basically the, just the centerpiece of their team. Um, you see them send their dual lane a lot mid. Twitch Annie is kind of their signature from playoffs. They really like to just get their... Uh, they say that when Uzi gets fed, they win. If Uzi's having a bad game or if he goes on tilt or if he just doesn't have a good game, they always lose. Um, it doesn't seem like their champion pools are very good. Whites is known for his fizz. He can play like TF and Zed. And people, people basically just undervalue the rest of the team and say Uzi is the star of the show. Well, I know we're going to be getting back to this a little bit later today. We'll touch on, of course, Royal, uh, uh, sorry, Gamma Bears and Cloud9. But for now, let's take a look how you guys stack up against each other on the analyst desk standings. Sitting at the top of the pack are the viewers with a massive record of 30 and 5. In second place, it's the Trinity Force of Casters 
and Monte Cristo at 28 and 7. At the bottom of the standings are Double Lift, three games back, and Crepo, four games off of the first. Uh, all right, you guys have five more chances to predict correctly, which means you might not want to choose the same games as the viewers if you're actually hoping to win this thing. <laughs> and I think Group A is going to be a little more difficult. But before you make your picks, we need to go over the games that are coming up, guys. Up first, it's Europe's Lemon Dogs taking on um, North America's Team Solo Mid in a grudge match rematch. Then, Gaming EU fights for the first win on the world stage against SK Telecom T1. After that, it's a battle between OMG and Lemon Dogs. Then, Team Solo Mid takes on Gaming Gear. And finally, we close out the group stage with, with an epic battle between the two top teams of the group, Korea's MVP Faker and Korea as er, and SKT1 versus China's MVP Cool and OMG. Going to be a massive matchup. And once that final nexus has fallen, please don't go anywhere because the captains of Cloud9, Najin Black Sword, Royal Club, and Gamma Bears will take to the stage to choose their quarterfinal opponents. All right, before we get to the selections, we get to watch some more games, which means, gentlemen, it is time for you to make your 36th prediction of the group stage. The Lemon Dogs versus Team Solo Mid. Freak, who do you have coming out of this match with a W? Uh, I got to go with TSM. They won the first time around, and I think that from what we saw of their games yesterday, they still look pretty strong as a team. They make some good choices. Their conceptual play is good. And uh, just to get some extra pride for them, I think they want to win this match pretty strong. I agree with Freak. I think TSM, for the pride factor, and, I mean, we have that history as well, they really shut down Nuke Duck in mid lane. Faker had a great game on Zed last time around, so TSM it is. Faker. Oh, Faker. Reggie. Reggie. <laughs> Reggie. It's getting close. Wow. Yeah. Is your faker? Yeah. It's yeah, getting I'm, close. I'm going with TSM as well. Um, they're just seeming really solid. It's a shame they didn't make it out of the group, but I think they're playing really well right now. Uh, I'm going to rep Europe and go for Lemon Dogs here. Uh, I'm predicting that the, the fans <laughs> are going to go for TSM, and if I want to make it back into the standings, I'll probably have to go for Lemon Dogs. Although, I still think Lemon Dogs can, can take this win regardless of, of the analyst race here. Because I think Nuke Dog didn't respect Reggie enough. They let him have Zed. They got shut down by Vigangs repetitively. Same mistake over and over again. At least they, they will realize what a threat uh, uh, Dyrus' Vlad is. I think they made too many obvious mistakes that they can easily avo avoid right now. And I just want to see the power of Lemon Dogs come out. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a matchup that uh, these two teams, th either team can win it. And I think for Lemon Dogs, they may want it more because of how badly they were beaten last time. You know, we were theorizing a little bit about picks and bands, and I, I want to see what's more, what's better, the, the apple pie hunger or if it's going to be the revenge hunger. <laughs> uh, if you guys think you can do better than these guys, and based on the standings, you can, head over to lolesports.com and make your picks for all 